Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is our next special episode, and you guys voted on the on my uh, fan page on Facebook, and it seems that the dinosaur that we're going to be talking about today is Ceratosaurus. And what we're actually going to be talking about in Ceratosaurus would look a lot like this. As you can see, that the name Ceratosaurus means horn lizard, just mainly for the the horn on on top of its nose but anyway let's actually get start with uh, with some descriptions of the animal uh, besides the horn on the nose for instance the length of ceratosaurus is between 20 to 25 feet in length and uh, its height is really difficult to interpret because right now it's pretty much like in the 7 to to 11 feet tall kind of range. The biggest ceratosaurus would probably reach like maybe 11 or 12 feet tall in that and basically lived in a Jurassic period and also weigh between 1 ton to 3,000 pounds. So it's not really a large kind of predatory dinosaur and uh, in the and it lived in a Jurassic period along with some interest with uh, some uh, other predators and some uh, <clears throat> and some pretty famous herbivores too. Its remains have been found in the United States, more more famously in the United States, but its all, but its remains have also been found in Portugal and Spain, and also its remains have have been found in Tan Tanzania, which is kind of kind of interesting, we you know, because you see, so pretty much it's almost a wide ranging dinosaur. Uh, during the Jurassic period and um, particularly it would have been more common in uh, in the United States and in Europe because you see it and because it actually was particularly in in uh, environments where it can actually be comfortable with me mainly forested to uh, river valley areas so it would actually be more comfortable there the anatomy of uh, Ceratosaurus is really interesting if we look at the skull, we actually notice that there's that blade-like appendage on top of its nose. And you see it's very thin, uh, very thin bone. So it's not really going to be uh, used for combat. So it's mainly for uh, display. So it pretty much is actually going to be used for, like, if males actually have larger uh, crests on their nose, they would actually be probably brightly colored or otherwise they would just pretty much show off against other males you know I would think females would actually have them too it probably wouldn't be more distinct as the males so it probably would actually be like almost like a rounded top like edge instead of like probably like a pointed so I would probably say that the males have more of a pointed uh, blade like appendage whereas the the females would actually have a more shorter, rounder uh, type of blade on their nose, but they also have uh, blade have uh, hornlets on top of their eyes. But it's but they're mainly for display. But when we actually look at uh, the teeth of Ceratosaurus, they're very thin and blade-like, and that is pretty much how it's actually going to be determined by uh, what kind of prey it eats but the distinct the, the most distinguishing thing about ceratosaurus is that its teeth are not really as strong as some of the other predatory dinosaurs like say like say if we look at its competitor in the jurassic like allosaurus allosaurus had more thick teeth had thicker teeth stronger teeth pretty much well designed to um capture prey uh, that is much tougher than it really, really tough to tackle down. Whereas Ceratosaurus didn't really have to do that. It really actually had to, like, take a bite and then back off and watch its prey bleed to death. That's pretty much how it actually would kill. Allosaurus, on the other hand, would actually use its top, top teeth and just slam its, its skull, uh, right at the prey to cause massive wounds and make the prey bleed to death that way. 
But if we actually want to look at uh, Ceratosaurus as, as what kind of a predator it could be, I would actually say it's more of an ambush predator. Pretty much like tackling things that are probably like small, small prey, probably like uh, Dryosaurus and probably some uh, juveniles of like Stegosaurus and Cantosaurus. So that would probably be the prey of choice for the for uh, Ceratosaurus. It probably would actually hunt like Stegosaurus and some sauropods, but probably would scavenge off of the sauropods then then hunt them down. But in terms of its behave, but how it would behave is really going to be a mystery. I would say if we want to take a good analogy of of Ceratosaurus. Um, I would say if we want to look at monitor lizards a little bit, because I would think that monitor lizards are ambush predators, and they would actually kind of be a really good model for uh, Ceratosaurus. But even though I, it's really hard to determine what kind of animal, what kind of uh, modern animal that we can compare to Ceratosaurus, but it's very difficult to actually understand uh, what kind of uh, uh, predator it really was. But even though in the United States, Ceratosaurus is actually, if we look at Ceratosaurus uh, and, and other parts of its anatomy, let's look at the hands, for example. The hands actually have four fingers instead of three or two, like in most common predatory dinosaurs. And what that really shows, it's actually a primitive dinosaur, meaning it has an older lineage of, of traits. For a dinosaur, so it's pretty much going to be a dinosaur that is not as advanced as like Allosaurus or Trinosaurus or even some of the raptors. So it's actually going to be very more like old age kind of dinosaur. So it's so it's pretty much an animal that really didn't have to do a lot of aggressive behavior uh, to actually um, to actually make its living. But I mean, it would still be a very dangerous dinosaur to actually walk up upon. I mean, think about it. If you actually came up uh, right in front of a, a Ceratosaurus, we would actually we would actually probably think it would actually probably chop us, of course. But it would not shake us. It would just basically just bite us and just let it let us go. So it would pretty much just like take give us a bite and then just like go and just watch us bleed to death. But we would go into shock first, and then we would we would go to shock after we lose our blood, lose the blood, and then pretty much it's it's pretty much uh, dinner for uh, Ceratosaurus. But also, its skeletal design is not really strong, so it's not really a str a sturdy kind of dinosaur. So it's pretty much. A dinosaur that does not want to do a lot of uh, combat, does not want to do uh, physical work to actually take down prey or otherwise win a fight. So it's actually going to be really pretty much like, like kind of like a, a boxer that just takes a jab and then backs off, a jab and then back off, you know. So it'd probably be a pretty good model for a Ceratosaurus is a, a boxer that would just take a jab and then back off and another jab and back off you know but I would probably considering that uh, Ceratosaurus also lived during the t during the time of Allosaurus uh, Allosaurus was much more common than Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus would actually pretty much be next on on top of the pyramid of predatory dinosaurs in the Jurassic. So it actually, so Ceratosaurus would actually probably be like right in the middle of the pyramid of the predatory dinosaurs in the Jurassic. So I'd probably, because there's still some bigger dinosaurs, bigger predatory dinosaurs than Allosaurus, like Torvosaurus and Pos and uh, Sorophaganax. And uh, there's not a lot of there's not that much about Torvosaurus and uh, Sorophaganax. Sorophaganax has been pretty much pretty much known for a skull and also uh, a few random bones. Whereas Torvosaurus 
is a little bit more complete, but even though there's still some bones missing, like parts of the tail, some parts of the arms, and even the feet, and the, some vertebrae are missing. But I mean, that's kind of how fossils, that's how some dinosaur fossils actually come out, is pretty much they are missing some pieces. But if we actually tried to see if Torvosaur, if we actually tried to see a fight between uh, Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus, Ceratosaurus would be a little bit more agile, whereas Torvosaurus is more powerfully built. It would actually pretty much just take one bite and then possibly knock down the Ceratosaurus with its body weight, with its pretty much its strength. So it would pretty much just take down the Ceratosaurus based on its strength. Whereas Ceratosaurus' strength is pretty much like this, just take this, take a a very slow bite and then back off. And if we want to find out what kind of caused the extinction of Ceratosaurus and some of the other um, dinosaurs in the in the Jurassic, it's very difficult because there is a gap in between uh, the late. Jurassic and part of the early Cretaceous of some dinosaurs. It's because it's a big honking mystery. Almost twenty, almost twenty percent of uh, the dinosaur of the animals that lived in the late Jurassic were gone. I mean, that's kind of kind of random. But when we look at it, is that we're, there's a lot of theories out there, like uh, like uh, climate change. Climate change could actually be. The, probably the number one uh, uh, catalyst for the extinction of the Jurassic dinosaurs, and uh, that's probably the big, that's probably the most supporting theory. But the other theory is that they were probably victims of their own success, which is kind of strange because I mean you can actually say like, oh, why would they be victims of their own success? I mean, if they were that successful, so that successful, uh, how could they just vanish? You know, but I mean, if you actually look at it, if if we look at the evolutionary tree of these animals, we actually see that there's change going on in some dinosaurs, like like uh, there are new allosaurs that actually came in the mix, and then there are probably new new predators that came into the mix that would that would actually take down uh, Ceratosaurus. Like some of the raptors, some of the raptors were so were so advanced. They were so much more advanced than Ceratosaurus, and even some of the other Allosaurs were more advanced than Ceratosaurus. You see, Allosaurus was more advanced than Ceratosaurus, and uh, Ceratosaurus uh, is probably a very iconic dinosaur in ter in terms of some of the public. But even though T-Rex is still T-Rex, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus, those are the number one dinosaurs. Even some of the raptors are the number one dinosaurs uh, to actually be looked at as, as to the public. But right now, Ceratosaurus has been shown in a few movies in the past. Because if we look at some of the Hollywood movies back in probably like in the 1920s all the way down to the 1960s we actually see that ceratosaurus has been in a few movies been in a few movies like one i think one one million bc was actually showed a ceratosaurus i can't totally be sure but i know that i know ceratosaurus has been shown in a few movies and uh and i would say that ceratosaurus is probably an iconic dinosaur in terms of uh, paleontologist because I'd say that that it's still a cool looking dinosaur if you actually kind of look at it I mean it's still a good looking dinosaur to, to actually uh, talk about and uh, I think it's still a pretty cool dinosaur uh, no matter what uh, yeah actually how, how you put it so I would say Strat Ceratosaurus is like in my top 15 of uh, dinosaurs uh, predatory dinosaurs uh, on my list top 15 di predatory dinosaurs and I think it's so pretty cool all right that's it for now and uh, next week episode next week's episode will be answering questions so if you actually got a question of uh, uh, email me at dino chris 71 at gmail.com or otherwise post uh, your question on my Facebook fan page prehistoric facts with dino chris and also follow me on Twitter uh, at CS Grawl. That's my that's my address on Twitter. So make sure you can follow me on Twitter. And uh, oh, 
and also um, <clears throat> feel free to post your questions on Facebook I mean it's not it's not that hard I mean yeah uh, I would actually put I would actually say it's better for email because that way I can actually read it a lot better but I mean you could still post it on Facebook because that would still answer your f questions on Facebook so feel free to post your questions on Facebook Facebook I got face Facebook <laughs> what am I talking about <laughs> Talking, I'm just losing my talking ability, I guess. <laughs> I mean, what do you, what can you do? Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, make sure you send in those questions. Uh, I'll be doing that episode uh, next uh, next week Saturday at night, so that way I can actually get done with uh, with uh, family day coming up next week on this Saturday, uh, next week Saturday. So hopefully I can get some questions and. And make sure to make sure to follow me on Twitter and 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 uh, like the fan page on Facebook, and uh, also also take care of the people around you and uh, you know you younger kids out there. Make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are your best motivation to actually have a good education, and it's very important to have a very to have a good education. And I'm still doing my and I'm still going on in my education, and I'm still loving it. And <clears throat> So, hope to see you guys next week and keep on sending those questions. Been looking forward to it, and see you guys later.